from the SAP Center at San Jose, home of the San Jose Sharks. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering HGST Sports Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by HGST. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome, hello everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's special presentation of Sports Data SV. This is a CUBE exclusive here at the Shark Tank, the SAP Center here in San Jose, home of the San Jose Sharks. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, theCUBE, and Jeff Frick, and Stu Miniman with BookieBond.org, and we are here to discuss all the conversations around sports data here in Silicon Valley. Guys, welcome to the special presentation brought to you by HGST. We store the data, sports data, it's a competitive advantage. Patrick of innovation here tonight. Guys, we got their HGST, the Cube, their customers. Should be a great event. Jeff, Sports Data SV is our third event now uh, at Oracle Open World. We heard them kick off with the Golden State Warriors. That's right. And it was like a Cube interview from two events ago, managing your fan experience, managing your customers and your team. Here we are. If, if only the Mets had hold the lead <laughs> yesterday, we could still say the world <laughs> champion San Francisco Giants are going to be attending, so they haven't been champions for a day. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the Golden State Warriors could not attend the world champion Warriors because they had a game tonight, but we're excited. We have the, the, uh, uh, the Raiders are here from the NFL. First time the Raiders have been on the Cube. Of course, we're going to have Bill Schlau, Cube favorite from the Giants. He's always up to something every off season, so his off season has officially begun. And of course, Dave Cobble and the Earthquakes will be stopping by. They uh, just finished their first season at uh, their new arena, so we'll get an update from Dave. We've got the guys from CrossFit. CrossFit is, is kind of sweeping everything. It's a fitness workout. It's uh, you know, HDST has really embraced it as a way to bring their employees together, have fun competitions, as well as it's a TV show and you know, filling on ESPN. So we got the CrossFit guys. We're going to talk to them. Got some executives from HGST, so I'm excited. You know, it was a year ago, we were at AT&T Park looking over the, uh, over the field. Now we're here at SAP Center in San Jose looking out over the ice. It's a great venue, it should be a good event. Stu Miniman just flew in from uh, Massachusetts here for the special presentation as well, as well as doing some visits. And Stu, we're Patriots fans, seven and zero. Oh. Uh, I know the Niners and the Raiders are not as strong as the Patriots, but the Raiders are making a big comeback. They're beating the Jets yesterday, which is great for the AFC East teams, <laughs> great for the, the Raiders. Not your usual CUBE conversation today. We're talking about infrastructure, all that, but this is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited for it, John. I mean, we've been talking for years that data is the competitive advantage that people get, and in sports, it's a great use case for this. First of all, you talk about the fan experience. I love, from an infrastructure standpoint, every time a new stadium gets built, there's so much IT that goes into it to make both on the field and the fan experience uh, you know, happen. Uh, great IOT angles, talking about all the sensors that are everywhere. And they, I mean, the, the, the teams themselves are using data a lot. So you know, hopefully they're getting all their data the right way. You know, people making yeah. comments about the Patriots and everything, but uh, you know, all in the up and up. Excited to be here, John. The big thing that I love about this new world we live in with the connected consumer, you got IOT, you got cloud, you got big data, predictive analytics, is that for sports teams, it's a whole new ball game. The economics are obviously there with TV and distribution but it's a fan experience now, it's real critical. They're now involved in the production, you're managing your teams differently in an era of free agency and competitiveness, having that management, and of course managing your employees that work the game. So I'm super excited. Jeff, t talk about the, uh, the HGST and the CrossFit. I want to explain that relationship, and HGST sponsored us to be here, really appreciate that. We're going to talk with the execs there, but talk about that relationship between HGST and CrossFit. Yeah, so, so Mike, uh, the CEO at HGST, decided to get involved with CrossFit because he saw a real positive benefit, and I don't know if you've ever seen the, the TV shows, John, the competitions, but it's kind of a wild scramble of all different types of, of working out all combined into one thing. They're lifting weights, they're running, they're picking up medicine balls, but it's a really just great way to get in shape, and people are get super passionate about it. In fact, in fact, um, I, I know HGST is using it as a way to kind of bring the yeah. people together. There's some great videos of them out in the parking lot. Everybody's got their t-shirts on and you know, a way to release some energy and, and get a good workout. And, and obviously it's healthy, you get the endorphins moving. It's a very positive thing. Uh, but also, it's a, it's a growing trend. It's an entertainment vehicle. Yeah. The, H, uh, the uh, CrossFit Games, uh, back this summer, they shot them down in, in Southern California. Huge stadium full of people bright sunny days, beautiful people running around, throwing weights around. So, you know, it's it's part of this kind of new ESPN2, you know, where these these 
other sports beyond the big four, you know, are gaining yeah. traction. And the thing about those types of sports, kind of like golf, where you can do it yourself, right? You can watch the best, you can watch the elite, but then you can also go out and do it yourself. So you can get connected to it. So the issue he has gotten really behind this. Um, we'll, we'll get an, an update from Mike uh, Cardano and, as to how it's really impacting the culture of the company, but it's, a, you know, get everybody's head up out of their email, get out of the cube for a minute, get outside in well, the parking lot, get some fresh air, and probably better for your health I benefits. really like how it humanizes the storage role because the role of storage, we've always said every year, storage is dead, storage is dead, and it's not, that's what the bloggers are saying, but every year there's more and more data. Every year, every year, more and more data, and it humanizes it. And Stu, we talk, we see the social media aspect. You see CrossFit getting into entertainment, the con internet consumers connected. It's a communal experience now. With social media, the the consumption of the consumer is not just consumption more. They're part of the production. Yeah, social I mean, media is a very big so part of it. John, it, it's personalization. So the, the CrossFit, uh, the wearables, it's getting that information to the person so that they can do what makes sense for them. Uh, you know, do it with their friends. Uh, you know, they, they're giving away some Fitbits to some of the audience here with a raffle. Uh, I know that was one of the giveaways yeah. they had a year ago when we did the HGST event. So uh, when you can measure it, you can kind of do contests with your friends. I know I was out with the kids for Halloween and I'm tracking against friends. We had a little contest <laughs> over the weekend as to how many <laughs> steps you're doing. So <laughs> it, it kind of gives you that extra little motivation when your friends are doing it and get the Do your kids know they're being so. tracked? Uh, yeah, they, they, they know the fit. Yeah, it's all right, Dad, if you get your 10,000 steps in, you know, so uh, uh, it, 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 it's helpful. But, uh, it, but it's interesting, because it's also this internet of things, right? Because now those Fitbits, it's more than just how many steps. It's what's your heart rate, what's yeah. your calorie burn, what's your consumption, and, and, and really we were right on the edge of the yeah. internet of things in the personalization experience, because we're wearing them. As, we, we talked to uh, Tom O'Reilly from Cloudera. He likes to talk about his big wearable, which is his Tesla, right? That he gets <laughs> downloaded software, it knows what he wants to do, where he wants to go. And so, you know, this yeah. whole internet of things is driven by data, and all that data's got to be stored somewhere. So I don't think storage is going anywhere soon. As he said to us, he rolls through the stop sign so his insurance went up <laughs> because of it, because Tesla's <laughs> reporting it back. But let's get back to the internet, internet of things, because one of the things, Stu, you and I talk about all the time, and Jeff, you're on social media, you're all the time with the, with the cube gems and whatnot, is that there's now a new fan experience that's emerging. Periscope, some of the things we're seeing behind the scenes, social media, the Instagram, the Snapchat. So you're seeing a whole nother level of data sources coming in from the fans themselves. So the event itself is the is an the event, but there's an event going on within the event. Right, right, right. And we see it time and time again. And people want their own personalized version. What's interesting about sports and big time pro sports is it's still one of the things that draws. It can draw an audience on a Sunday afternoon. It's going to get the ratings. It really brings together a huge audience. But as you said, and, and a lot of talk about what's going on at Levi Stadium, you know, then there's all this personalized fan experience happening, enabled by the technology, uh, auto on replays, sharing social media, hashtags, you know, the, the purists will say, you know, <laughs> we forget about the game. But the, but the reality is, people want to set up their own experience, yeah. and the technology now is enabling them to do it the so their way. So will we have a Super Bowl event, Sports Data SV? Boy, we're going to try to get over there. <laughs> we got to talk to the, the NFL, yeah, it's right down the street. 100 days away till Super Bowl 50. Stu, so you think the Patriots will be there? Uh, so uh, if you look at 538.com, which they've got the data on it, the, the Patriots are at the top there. Uh, you know, they, they, they're in the playoffs, it seems. <laughs> you know, yeah. they should win the division. And, uh, you know, th it's a tough road. I mean, you know, it's always once you get in the playoffs, anything goes. But uh, I'm feeling good about the Patriots' chances. They've got a good balanced team this year. And Tom Brady's going to play for another 10 years. So, you know. Yeah, and his Local dream. It'll, it'll I, go doubt, I doubt that's going to happen, but we'll take bets <laughs> on that later. What happened to Green Bay, though, <laughs> on the uh, 538 update? I'm wondering. <laughs> Jeff, what are you hearing about sports and, and sensors? One of the things we speculated, we saw some things about basketball, having some devices in there. There's talk about hockey, golf, Callaway, talk about having you know, some of the instrumentation. With instrumentation, what are some of the things that you guys are seeing in sports right now? Because that certainly will change the dimension of the game. Yeah, well I'm really excited. We have Mike King coming on from Zebra Technologies. We got introduced to, to Zebra Technologies at a, um, it's kind of <laughs> Uh, it, kind of an inside GPS show, talking about you know inside sensors, inside mapping, and actually the CIO of the NFL was supposed to speak. She couldn't show, Zebra filled in, and it's a really great story, not only because what they can do, and they put these sensors, we'll learn more about it, on the shoulder pads of the NFL players, so they know exactly where they are, how fast they're moving, how's their acceleration change throughout the course. They also have them on the refs. Where are the refs? How are the refs moving? Are the refs yeah. where they're supposed to be to make the call? But what's, what else is really great? The ACC great could use that, <laughs> certainly against the Duke game. Yeah, yeah, the Duke-Miami, I don't know if they had them there, but, 
But what also is interesting about it to me is that it's old technology. Zebra's an old company. It's RFID technology that was used for inventory tracking, sticking these sensors on pallets. And for them to really kind of rethink and find a new application within the sports world um, and to be able to show things. The, the highlight case they talk about is a J.J. Watt interception and they had his speed going down the field on the network feed with a speedometer before he got to the end zone. So, you know, very, very fast, really interesting information, and we'll talk to Mike, who's got a long uh, history in the, the sports data world and things like the pitch tracker and the yellow first down line and how the use yeah. of those things has evolved from, you know, kind of entertainment because NASCAR, it's kind of hard if you're not into it yeah. to say who's driving, how fast are they going. But now, it's, is it going to be the official rule? Is the, is the unofficial yellow line more accurate than the guys on the sideline? Is that going to be the first time? Oh. Is the pitch, the pitch counter going to replace the umpire who's behind the plate at some point in time? So yeah. the evolution is moving very, well, very we've quickly. We've heard from uh, Amazon reInvent that's talking about all the camera angles in real time. The World Series last night, you saw the stat track, which is, shows you how far the ball goes. It's going to be a matter of time before that happens. Yeah. And certainly the clouds too. What technologies are still uh, enabling this? What is the key in your mind as an analyst? We look at the, the technologies under the hood now. For these sports teams, what are the key successes that you need to see happen in this market to accelerate this massive user experience? Yeah, well, it's, you know, whoever, we've seen people trying to become data brokers. So, you know, the, what information can you access from what you have and, and what can you tap into? So, you know, you're seeing pro teams, you know, kind of creating, uh, you know, originally had the money ball, creating your own information. Uh, but, you know, how do you keep a differentiated differentiation? Because everybody, it, it's kind of an arms race. You're trying to get the talent, you're going to try, try to get the data scientists out there. Um, a lot of it is asking good questions, being able to understand what's going in. So, you know, you say from a technology standpoint, John, but a lot of it's going to come down to the people. It's, you know, changing the personalization. the coach. Uh, it's the personalization. Uh, you know, we've seen it, uh, you know, on the, on the uh, athletes themselves. It changes their diet. It changes how they exercise. There's so many pieces that go into it that it, it's, it's multifaceted and, and going to, you know, radically transform the sport. Yeah, Jeff, we were just talking at Stanford this morning at a, at a Women in Data Science conference where the word user experience is now in context to big data analytics, where big data analytics is actually fueling, and there's controversy around some of the iterations and agileness of using data to create a better user experience. Some people think it might be a little bit creepy, and right, like right. we're trying to change people's behavior by what data may be available. So there's a double-edged sword here with privacy and personalization. Yeah, if, I, if I can, if I can uh, match somebody's genome and understand what I have to do for it, you know, how much of it is that a competitive advantage, and what's fair and yeah. what's not fair? We heard that Facebook example where people, they were experimenting with people's timelines and they said Facebook's controlling the emotions of their user base. Now that was just kind of the press going crazy on that, but they're just trying to put together a good experience. That's really what they're trying but to do. But I think it's important that you know, there's still room for people, right? There's still judgments. This is not, as we talked earlier today, you don't just throw a bunch of data in a Hadoop cluster and magically all the answers come out, right? You got to have context, you got to know what the, the, the morale, moral issues are, the ethical issues which, which come to play on things like you talked about, changing people's experience. So there is a room for the expert. There is a room for someone to help manage, wrangle, and make sense of the data. Um, that said, there's a lot more of it to play with. There's a, it's coming at you a lot quicker. So the opportunities for disruption, which also give opportunities for innovation, creativity, uh, new value creation are tremendous. Okay, so I got to bring up a couple topics to kind of end the segment out or, uh, before we kick off the interviews is, really the notion of e-sports, virtual reality is changing the game on experiences, and also the notion of real time. Let's take real time first. Are we in a position now where you guys think we're in a real time technology where that will accelerate? And what does that mean vis-a-vis -vis the new experiences? e-gaming, e-sports, I could participate with an Oculus Rift down the road. Those are cutting edge trends. I mean, I, don't, I might not have to go to a Giants or Sharks game. I can just watch out my Oculus <laughs> Rift and turn and see who's in the stadium next to but me. But nobody will spill yeah. beer on you though, Tom. <laughs> no, I think it's still, you know, it's an interesting place. And, and it's, you just look no further than uh, technology innovations in your favorite sport and how quickly you adopt them. I remember the first time Fox started putting all the stat tracker in the upper left with the time, the score, the timeouts, and you're like, oh, that's crazy, it's taking up all this space. Before you know it, you love it, and you're watching it all the time. The one that I, I love watching now is the sky cam in the NFL games that's flying all over the place. Two years ago, they introduced that, and you're like, oh, I can't stand that shot, I'm not used to that shot, get rid of that thing. 
Now you watch the creativity, how much more they're using it. Now they've got the guys in the black shirts running out onto the field right after the touchdown in the middle of the cheering to give you that up yeah. close and personal. So I think it's going to continue to evolve. I don't know how the athletes feel about it. I guess they get yeah. they make a lot of money, so they got to kind of go with, with whatever's dictated. But the technology changes, and it's kind of a, uh, abrupt and a little weird at first, but it's amazing how fast yeah, as and, humans and, we adapt. And John, you talk about real time. I mean, we're getting real time, not just the regular real replays, but there's segments available so yeah. quick. You can rewatch it. Uh, I, I know you'll watch the NFL games and kind of the compressed 30 minutes afterwards. So, so many ways that we get that either second screen yeah. or time shifting uh, to be able to consume more content, find it different ways, interact with our yeah. peers, a lot of second screen. Levi activity. Stadium, they have literally six seconds from every camera angle to your phone in six seconds after a touchdown. So that's, but it can't leave the stadium yeah. because the Comcast has licensing rights. So that opens up another segment, we'll get to that later. <laughs> the, the rights legal. of, hey, you're watching Sports Data SV special presentation of theCUBE here at the Shark Tank. And we'll be back more with coverage here and right after this short break. <laughs>